Never before in the history of the modern penal system have British prisons faced such an acute crisis. This is life in a local prison, as it actually happens today. How old are you? 21. And what's your date of birth? 16, Sam, 58. At the lot. No watches, rings, medallions, nothing like that. Trevor is beginning his first prison sentence as an adult. He must undergo the process that changes a man into a prisoner. It begins here in reception. Let's scroll through a heart. No more? Any other sort of marks on your body? Any other distinguishing marks at all? Scar, no. Scar, something. Right. Just don't walk away. Stay there. Blue fancy tie. Blue jacket, pinstripe. I'm going to go the Black slip on shoes. Down the table and the table. Pick up again, did you go around? Yeah, right. Down that way. Yeah, sorry. Come here. Would you drop your trousers right down? Pull your shirt right up. Drop it right down. Now, have you got any medical complaints? Oh, come on, Rick. You're a healthy boy, are you? Yeah. Pull your shirt right up for me. What's this scar for here? Stumped. Eh? Or stumped. Mm. When you get up these stairs, I want you to stand around the iron grid and wait there. Trevor had been out of Borstal only three days when he was arrested and subsequently convicted for theft of a motor car. Just three days of freedom, then three weeks on remand, and now his first night in strange ways. Bailey, 31. Gavin, 31. Gear, you I think so, yeah. I don't want to suppose to have them. Rust, two rust. Yeah, well. Me for the next few weeks. All right, lads? Yeah. OK. A vast range of petty crime is represented in a local prison like Strange Ways. The average stay is six to nine months. The most common offence, burglary. You. You. Society has exacted its revenge on the hundreds of men sleeping in these wings. They have lost their freedom. 
but for the vast majority, the punishment they endure will neither reform nor rehabilitate. straight onto the wall, sit well back in the seat. Trevor has become yet another number to add to a record prison population of over 44,000. Just come forward slightly to the wall. It's fine. Look straight at me. We imprison more people in this country as a percentage of the population than any other in Western Europe. Her Majesty's Prison Manchester is better known by the district in which it stands, Strangeways. Built in 1869, it was designed to hold just over a thousand men and women who could easily be inspected and controlled from the center of this giant Victorian spider's web. Today, the average population is 1,600, at a cost per man to the taxpayer of 120 pounds per week. Strangeways now remands men, allocates them to different prisons, and acts as a local jail where prisoners will spend their whole sentence. Look at me now. I'm banged up in here. They say 23 hours a day is a load of rubbish, a load of shit. 23 hours. I'm in this cell 24 hours a day because it says exercise when weather's permitted. And this weather, believe you me, it's always raining, so you're very ready to get exercise, anyway. so you're in here 24 hours a day. You're pissing in the bucket, you, you know, you're getting on your cellmate's nerves, you know what I mean? There's nothing to do, I don't read. It takes me all day to write a letter, so that passes the time away from me. But, you know, it's bad news, believe you me. Norman Brown, the governor of Strange Ways, is on his daily tour of inspection. An ex-tank commander who was severely injured during the war, he has followed his father and grandfather in the prison service. He has a reputation as a hard governor, concerned with discipline and cleanliness. Getting on with it. 
The governor of any prison is bound by law to accept men sentenced by the courts. For Norman Brown, this may soon become a physical impossibility. How long can we expect men to tolerate being locked up for 23 hours a day? In this prison, uh, daily, I have an a unemployment force of about 200, 250 men, permanently. But there are days when the whole of my workshop area is closed, which means I've got an, a locked-up force of 1,500 men, apart from your kitchen staff and cleaners. And I ask myself, how long would I tolerate being locked up, three in a cell or two in a cell, for 23 hours a day? The prison is dependent on the overtime prison officers work in their daily routines of locking, unlocking, supervising, fetching and searching. Without it, the prison would cease to function. But staff shortage, coupled with the growth of union power, has led to unprecedented industrial action. In strange ways, it has resulted in no association, no evening classes and no work, until conditions improve to the satisfaction of prison officers. There are in this prison two toilets for every hundred men, a bath once a week, an hour's exercise weather permitting. It is a situation that borders on the intolerable. We have created a social time bomb for ourselves. Stand on the mat, fasten your jacket up. Give me your full name and your phone number to the FBO and address the PO's sir. H56181, sir. Trevor George Bailey. All right, Bailey, you were sentenced by Manchester City Magistrates Court yesterday to three months imprisonment for theft of a motor vehicle. Is that correct? Sure. Despite the daily prospects of closed workshops, the ritual of classifying prisoners and allocating them jobs continues regardless. The processing machine never stops. Uh, is he a reasonable type, sir? So we look in the stores, the main stores, good job. All right, eventually you may well be getting allocated to another prison. When that's been decided, we'll call you up and we'll let you know where it is. In the meantime, we work in the main stores. Sure. What's your number again? 856181. Attempts still continue to offer prisoners something more than a prison cell. <laughs> you can have five books, five books, any five books, but on the Western, only two Western and two paperbacks. Oh, look at it. <laughs> Aphrodisiacs in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we start off over here with your question? Un et deux font combien? Trois, deux et deux font combien? Quatre. Deux et trois font combien? Cinq. Deux et quatre font combien? Six. Trois et quatre font combien? Sure. Uh, six et deux font combien? Huit. Sept et deux font combien? Neuf. Cinq et cinq font combien? Dix. Cinq et six font combien? Onze. Six et six font combien? Douze. Un et un font combien? Deux. Un et deux font combien? Trois. Deux et deux font combien? Quatre. Deux et trois font combien? After two weeks, Trevor has been given another education, how to be a successful criminal. Well, I know a lot of things that I didn't know when I come in about burglary and all that, you know. It just grows on you, doesn't it? That, that's the main talk, and that's the subject you talk about in here. Just burglary and all that, you know, robbing. So what have you been told about robbing? Well, the guys, you know, they say that. They ask you, you know, when you get out, do you fancy coming with us doing this and that? You know, where you're living when you get out and that. You know, your padmates and all that. It's bad news, isn't it? As soon as you get out, they go robbing again, they're back in again. It's no good, is it? Okay. 
visiting group of law students furthered their education by a tour of the prison, an hour and a half for the lawyers and magistrates of the future to equip themselves with an insight into prison life. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How many have we got? We have two, four, six, eight, um, eleven. Okay. My name's Phil Scott. I'm a senior officer, acting principal officer, and it's my pleasant duty, I hope, to show you around this afternoon. We're not going to see everything. We've got about an hour and a half. as it is obvious, is the main entrance. Governor's office, boardroom. You'll be getting uh, a cup of tea and a few biscuits or something, plus a talk from the deputy governor about four o'clock. The thing to see when you see new receptions coming into prison, when they come into prison, we line them around the prison centre. And you can invariably tell the first timer. Like a kid who's just gone to Blackpool for the first time and seen the lights. You know, he's amazed. You can tell the old lags because it's, uh, he's looking around for pals to wave to, you know, old friends that he's met up with, you know. Those that are working get paid wages. Those that are not working get paid wages. The only difference is the amount of wage they get. Now, they go to the canteen. Now, they can't save money in the canteen. They go there to draw the wages um, in our shop. You can buy almost anything in there within reason. You're restricted to the amount of tobacco you can buy, two ounces. It's the only shop in the world where the customer is always wrong. <laughs> because they've got 15, 1,600, and you can only go once. Once, once a week? Yeah. Official. But then again, if a prisoner is working with an officer and he's in a, a good job, you know, and he's a good prisoner, as we class a good prisoner, we don't mean he's good at stealing, because he's not good at stealing or he wouldn't be in here. Um, when I say good, I mean he conforms to our society and he beha behaves in here. Because we've got some of the Well, a clean is on around about 95 pence a week or something like that. I know it's too much, but you do a good job. <laughs> Um, and then in the workshops, you'll get them up to £1.50, something like that. So is it two ounces of tobacco a week? Two ounces is the most they can retain in their possession. At any one time? At any one time. Well, any more is filling. But our main problem, of course, is this massive overcrowding. You can have the wrong man in the wrong cell and you can say to his two compatriots that they from now on will be his char lady. In other words, he won't take any part in the cleaning of the cell. If he's feeling hungry today, he can take the two meals from the other two men and have three meals instead of one. He can take their canteen, their tobacco. And uh, if the man is so inclined sexually, he can force ordinary, decent prisoners to indulge in a sexual relationship which is completely out of character and fond and they want nothing to do with it. Well, you've got, you've got many types of people in prison. You've got some very violent people. You've got some very timid people. The violent people who are violent outside are also violent in prison. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, if they can get away with it, they will do and you've got to stop them. Now, if you get a prisoner putting pressure on another prisoner, you try to stop it. If you get a prisoner attacking another prisoner, you stop it. And you've got to stop it physically sometimes. You've got to restrain him. And then after you've restrained him, you'll get some MP complaining that you're a thug because you've beat him up, when in actual fact all you've done is either protect yourself or a colleague or protect another prisoner. And that's the kind of... The, the real pressure that you do get. 
He had to grin and bear it. Up to now, I've been lucky. I've lost no remission. Many a time, I feel like hitting the screw. There's screws in here that do help you. There's some in here that are pure dogs. What else can I say? I mean, uh, the conditions. I heard about these conditions on the hill. I didn't believe them. I see them for myself now. I'm in here. I'm eating the same mucker day in, day out. The food never changes. Hygiene, they don't know the meaning of it here. You go down for your dinner. It's been mauled that many times, you don't want it. And by 12 o'clock, we've all got their lunch and they're back in their cells, which is no mean feat. I won't say they're all satisfied, but they're all back in their cells with, with their lunch. This is our Chief Catering Officer, Chief Catering Officer Maine. Pleased to meet you. Students, Chief. Pleased to meet you. That's the menu book. And it is very authentic. We don't <laughs> own food. <laughs> They have their porridge every day. <laughs> we, we obviously can't satisfy everyone. We do have uh, one or two complaints. Well, we have not very many. And yet they're still coming back for the meals, aren't they? They still come back. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the best hotel in Manchester. It's full all the year round. <laughs> This man received a scoopful of the chicken stew that was on the menu on his tray. Unfortunately, there was a couple of chicken bones in it. And I allowed the orderly who was dishing the chicken out to give him some more. On receiving this, he so suddenly emptied the contents of his tray back into the container of stew, saying, I'm not fucking having that. It's only recently you were on report, Harley. And only recently I removed you from the escape list and you promised that you would be of good conduct. Is that correct? Well, you know my attitude about using foul language to the officers, don't you? I will not tolerate it. You will forfeit all your privileges for ten days. You will be uh, excluded from uh, associated work for ten days, and you will forfeit ten days' remission. Thank you, Mr. Wood. I did not swear in front of him. You mean you don't swear? I do, but I didn't we swear. We all swear, don't we? I mean, it's well, I didn't swear in front of the officer. I've got witnesses there, but why fetch them down? Well, listen, the governor's... He, he didn't believe me. And he didn't... He, he, he wouldn't even believe the witnesses, even if I brought them down. He, he, he believes the officers more than us. Yeah. We have no rights yeah, in this yeah. place. Listen, listen, listen. We have no rights whatsoever. Listen, listen. While you're in this if these thing, people knew the truth about this place, this place will go up and out. Listen, listen. How, what sentence are you serving? Two and a half. Now you're doing two and a half years, and when are you due to go out of prison? <laughs> Not now. Well, when, when are you due? Come on. Now, December you, next year. Which is 12 months away. Yeah. You are aware that you are entitled to reclaim your, to apply for restoration and remission. Now, if you can do the next nine months clear of report... Nine months? I, I, I've never done nine months, but now I've tried all the hard to get this permission. All right, now, let's, let's see if you can... Kiss me in the mouth again, we're another ten. Now, let's, let's try a little bit harder. You're getting older, let's get a little bit more sense, a bit maturer. No. Nine months clear of report, restoration of remission, favourable reports from staff, and you can get most of your remission back. 
I'll just lose it all the time. No, this is being silly. No, I'll just lose it all the time. No, because you're not hurting yourself. You're hurting people outside. You're hurting your family. You I'm have not, a family. I have no family. So you're not bothered. I'm not bothered. A young man. And you, you prepare to, spend, all my you prepare to spend all that time in prison. I'll go out 1981, I'm not bothered. Well, is this not a silly outlet? If it is when you it is when you've no rights in prison. Well, all I can suggest is you stop looking out of that window, son. Because that's why, where you want to go out there. But the way you're talking, you're never going to get out there. I'm not bothered. Well, I think you're very silly. I'll just get to that stage. All I can hope that in a few years' time you start learning a bit of sense. Thank you. Sickness, tension, stress are part of prison life. Every day, prison medical staff issue hundreds of drugs and tablets to men whose conditions range from a headache to epilepsy. I've not got a headache by 8 o'clock. Come back and give me some more. But sometimes a prisoner cracks. Men who have attempted suicide are stripped naked and placed in the special padded cells in the prison hospital. They are left with only a blanket and a plastic pot, which this prisoner did not use. You've been rather silly, aren't you? That's up, to the, that's up to the senior medical officer. You must discuss it on the doctor's rounds. All right? Ask the MO when he comes round. No more. That's the lot. All right? Mm. See the dentist this morning. Only a minimal standard of medical care is available in strange ways. While there is access to specialists, the facilities are severely limited. If a complaint is serious enough, prisoners will be taken to a local hospital. We, we have so many men here. Um, I wouldn't know what the figure is, but when I was the governor of, of Exeter, I did a survey, and quite frankly, I would have released a third of my population on probation or conditional discharge or community, community order. <clears throat> but we have all the social inadequates here. We have the alcoholics. We have the debtors. We have the mentally disturbed. Now, prison is not a place for these people. And somehow or other, we've got to find an alternative for these people. We are simply containing prisoners. We're doing nothing with them. And we have come, become society's dustbin. Um, the one thing that grieves me is when I ask myself the question, what is the society doing about it? At the moment, I think the only thing we can describe it as is a human warehouse. People who should be in hospital, the magistrates, the courts, have no alternative but to put them into prison. But we, we just haven't got, we haven't got the professionalism we don't know, we're not trained to deal with such people. We just contain them. And sometimes it's only when a man smashes up or assaults a fellow prisoner or a prison officer that we find out that he has got a mental history. Well, he's not going to be satisfied, it? No, because he said he was having an actual mm -hmm. He said he went there. He said it was a he vendetta was against him by the professional. Yeah, well, the question is, why not that? Are we satisfied? Because I mean, the point yeah, was well, made that we, sh that we felt Yes. The prison's only answer to those who cannot or will not conform is further punishment. If a prisoner feels himself the victim of an injustice, he may ask to appear before Strangeways Board of Visitors. They are the only outsiders given the power to scrutinise this closed community and decide upon prisoners' requests and complaints. 
They are watchdogs whose independence few prisoners believe in. David Henry Trotter, Chief 31389. Ma'am. Yes, Trotter, what is it you want to ask us about? Well, I'm a YP. And uh, I've been put on this side to reclassify. And when I've got to go out of here, I've got to have a YP licence. So I'm saying, can I have my YP privileges, please? Yes. A YP is a young prisoner. No, Madam Chairman, he can't. He was reclassified for being on report so many times in the YP centre. He's been reclassified. On report? I've never been on report. Right. I beg your pardon? I've been on report in a prison. You lost 14 days on the 30th of October. I think you've got the You wrong lost seven page. days. Mm -hmm. What? You've got the same one. 31389. Is that your number? 31389? Yeah. Sorry, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, I've got the wrong shot. It was my fault. You were uh, classified an adult where? Here or Leeds? Leeds. No, then you cannot have your YP privileges. You're an adult prisoner now. Well, can I write to Iris Embassy about it? You may do so, if you so wish, Madam Chairman. And can I put in, state the things what I've, I want to write to them about and everything? Uh, as long as it doesn't contravene prison rules, i.e. you should do it, first of all, through a petition of the Secretary of State. Petitions take too long, though. I can't help that, my boy. Well, it seems, Trotter, that you came here as an adult and have to be treated as an adult whilst you're here, and that, as the Governor says, your only recourse, if you've got any complaint about that, is to petition the Home Secretary. Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. All very beautiful and clean. Uh, it's all very beautiful and clean. <laughs> Just the wall. Board members do not inform the prison when they carry out their tours of inspection. They must be the eyes and ears of the Home Office, as well as independent judges with the power to punish. It is a role that is becoming increasingly questioned, both among themselves and outside bodies. Yes, what is it you want to ask us about? That's a good request. Um, I'd like to know why I'm not allowed to use a gymnasium. Mm. Have you been refused permission? Yeah. A prisoner who has attempted to escape um, is branded with a uniform with yellow patches. Can I ask you, Madam Chairman, when he ever made an application to me to use the gymnasium? Made a governor's application, as you know. I, I didn't ask you that. I said, when did you ask me to, to use the gymnasium? I just explained I made a governor's application and I didn't see you. I was seeing the deputy governor. When was that? Quite a while ago. Kirkman, Madam Chairman, is fully aware no man on the escape list has any facilities whatsoever. They are under maximum supervision <coughs> and he will not be allowed to use the, use the gymnasium. And also I'd like to ask um, why I'm not allowed open visits. Why, I'm, why have I got to talk through a piece of glass in open visit? Well, obviously for the same reason, but the point is, Kirkman, that open visits are a privilege and not the norm, that the closed visit is the norm, so that you're not being penalised by a closed visit. So then what you're saying is that not only have I lost 80 days for escaping from the prison, I'm also being punished by having closed visits. Because as far as I see, I'm not going to escape out of the visit You've incurred room. the things that go with being on the escape list. Is that what you're talking about? Well, what I'm asking is, Ali, why am I having closed visits? Well, whenever we have just explained the prison? that closed visits go with being on the escape list and that a closed visit is a normal visit and that an open visit is a privilege. So then what you're saying is then that closed visits are being used as a punishment? No, I'm not suggesting that at all. Well, I'm suggesting a closed yeah. visit is the norm and that an open visit is a privilege. Well, then you're saying that the e-list is being used No, I'm saying punishment. exactly what I have said. We don't need to keep repeating it now, surely. So, uh, well, I'm not getting open visits then? No. I'm not going to the gymnasium. Apparently you're not. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
next one. Next one. Next one. Mm -hmm. What are the initials are there? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You've been looking after all right? No. You're not, so have you got any problems yeah. that you think we can help you with? Stand back. Why well, stand back? I'm told. Stand back, as you told. No, no. Have you got anything that you think we're likely to be able to help you about? You can't help me. We you can't. never have done. No. Right. Well, we come round each week just in case. I know all about I've, I've 26 do. years in prison, madam. Have on you? And, on. Mm -hmm. and I know all the answers and all the shortcomings of you people and mm. uh, what you're trying to press on to people. Why the mental anguish of 14 days before you people can rouse yeah. yourselves to try Now that's case. unfair. That's You've unfair. no idea what's involved about organising any witnesses that may be involved, for instance. Witnesses? Yes. Perhaps. How can there be any witnesses with these people to make sure there are no witnesses? Now, don't well, start making statements like that because you're just getting yourself worked up. I'm not getting myself noble. worked up at all. I'm don't, making a statement. Don't make allegations about it. There's nothing an allegation. I'm making it's a statement. It sounded very much like it. I'm not making an allegation. I'm making a statement that these people see that there are no witnesses on our behalf. Right. Well, I don't accept that for a minute, but I don't... Well, you're living in cloud cuckoo land. That's all I can say. Right. Well, there are witnesses of period adjudication frequently. You know. For the prisoner? Yes. The last one, the adjudication I did, there were two witnesses for the prisoner. And did you take any notice of them? We did indeed, and that man walked out, yes. Did he? Yes, he did. He didn't lose it. I'm sorry, I, I, can't, I can't believe that, madam. Hmm? Well, no. that's your privilege. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, you can't help me. You never have been able to. Good afternoon. Right, good, good afternoon. afternoon. Incidentally, just for the record, there was a, a, a report today, an adjudication today, where the man had ten witnesses, and they had to have two officers use two of my staff to yes. supervise all ten. Well, I must admit they don't call me in for adjudication very often because I'm that far to come. Yeah. But last time there were a number of witnesses, and the, the, it, was, it was actually went out at the end. He said it all, isn't it? He yeah. knows all the answers. <laughs> he knows all the answers. So general, it was. Impossible to pick a hole in the other. Yeah. He's a soldier in the office. Yeah, I've been in a month on Wednesday. Thursday. It's gone fast. It's gone very fast. As far as I'm concerned, this is the last time I'll ever be in this. <laughs> times have said that. Yeah. Must have said it a million times. <laughs> 